What's your take on Oregon and what they were able to do this offseason? I think this was already, I think it was a pretty dreamy portal class, if you ask me. Like, they obviously, you lose Bo Nix, you lose a, a lot of firepower on offense, but I think they went out and got the right replacements. And I think the thing with Oregon, the, the, the fun conversation to have here, could they go win a national title in 24? I mean, it, it's going to be a different kind of road for them, obviously, going into the Big Ten brand new brand new schedule and, and a lot of new challenges and stuff. But I think Dylan Gabriel, you can make the case that, that maybe he's the best quarterback in the transfer portal, or at least the most experienced, the one that's most most like, you know, conference title ready in terms of a guy that uh, is coming off the uh, best season of his career as a, a first team all Big 12 player, uh, a guy that, you know, assessed his situation and, and didn't like where he was going to get drafted and stayed in school and um, I think is is going to light it up at Oregon um, and, and is extremely qualified to go lead him on a, on a monster year. I think Evan Stewart, you mentioned, he can go prove he's a first-round type talent in Oregon's offense. And I love the pickup of, of Jabbar Muhammad, um, you know, the, this last week, a guy that they beat Alabama and Texas on. He's an all-pack 12 guy. They've added really nice pieces in the secondary. They also took Matthew Befford, the offensive uh, line transfer from Indiana, who was committed from uh, to Colorado, and obviously Colorado needs offensive linemen. So that yeah. was just cruel and un- un- unnecessary, but that just shows you how good this class is. That that's just a throw in uh, in this one. And then Ari, obviously Ari, they're they're recruiting at an extremely high level in terms of uh, high schoolers. So I think even with Bo Nix moving on, I'm very high on Oregon for 24. Yeah, I look at them, obviously, in a very tr- big transition period, Max, because obviously everyone knows they're going to the Big Ten. I think there is a discussion to be had because there is another big-time Big Ten team that's going to be on this list. Everyone knows that, whether or not Oregon's positioned to potentially win that conference in year one. But it's also a really big season for Dan Lanning. I think that he has proven himself in, in multiple ways, uh, namely talent acquisition, both both through the portal and in recruiting and he made a very interesting comment uh, I think in the last week or so saying that he believes that Alab- or that Oregon is the best job in the country after you know rumors that Alabama would be interested and it's multiple times now that coaching jobs have come open that he would have been a prime candidate for that he's stuck with Oregon on but he hasn't won at a high level on the field yet there have been opportunities to do so they could have won the the Pac-12 this year um, you're, you're waiting for him to break through make the playoff and, and make some noise in the postseason so to lose a guy like Bo Nix who could have won the Heisman maybe if two quarters went differently this year and to replace yep. him with Dylan Gabriel who you know we're not going to say is Caleb Williams who probably comes in and fits that system and plays within himself in a way that can keep Oregon going I mean, he's probably I I don't know where you put it but I mean is he probably a top 10 returning quarterback in college football I would probably, probably say so general, yeah I don't think that's like overly generous but I also think, too, and tell me what you think about this, but the fit in the system and how Oregon wants to do play offense and stuff kind of seems to fit his skill set, too, which probably bumps him up a few rungs on that on that discussion as well. No, I, I agree. I think he's going to be a guy that can get it out really fast. And, and you know, as much as you saw him slinging around at UCF in Oklahoma, I, I just think it's like really a really clean fit. And a guy that also, if you talk to Oklahoma coaches, they just rave about the leadership he brought to that program. In, in Brent Venable's first two years too. So like it, I, to me, that was like pretty dream scenario there. And one that Oregon didn't really have to fight anybody else on. Once he went in the portal, he knew pretty quickly he was going to be a duck. And, you know, are you look at the schedule and it, it's still, it's still a struggle for me to like wrap my head around these schedules um, for 20. It is weird to look at, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but they, they host Ohio state in the middle of October. They go to Michigan to start November um, they, they host Washington at the end of November. It's, and, and there's probably, look, there's probably going to be some games on that schedule that are, that are going to, you know, there may be some trickier games than they expect just because it's just so different in terms of the matchups, but I, I, I'm really high on what they've got coming back. I, as much as I like Troy Franklin and Bucky Irving and all the pieces that, you know, that are going to move on to the NFL, um, you know, it, it it's very, t- it was very telling to me that as soon as Nick Saban decided to retire. W- what does that say about a guy, Ari, that, that everyone on Twitter, I know, I know Twitter is just a bubble, but it seemed like everyone instantly, as soon as that job is open, is thinking Dan Landon. I mean, I think that speaks to yeah. at least the potential of what he can do um, as a head coach. And, and, and certainly the fact that he wasn't touching that job tells you what he thinks of Oregon. Yeah. I, that was my thought. Like when, when this first opened, I was like, who, if there's anybody in the country that can make you feel 
a little okay. You know, nobody's going to come in and make you feel okay about it, but like a little bit better. Mm -hmm. You go with the guy who has an SEC background, who recruits at a high level and kind of understands the game and how it needs to be played. Um, I do wonder, because he said this himself, um, if Oregon is the best job or one of the best jobs in college football, the NIL situation there, certainly with the proximity to Nike, uh, plays a factor in it. I don't know if you can ever overcome geography completely, but Oregon has done a pretty good job of doing so. Um, If they are now in a conference and in a situation where they actually are maybe a top 10 job or top seven job in the country. Um, and I think winning at a higher level kind of changes the the chemistry a little bit on how you view that job too. So certainly had a really good off season. I think that Troy Frank- Franklin last year was one of the more underrated playmakers in the country. I don't think he got as much love as he deserved. Yep. Uh, Bucky Irving was a really good running back too for the college level. And of course, Bo Nix his, was who he was and some offensive line help too there with Jackson Powers Johnson. I mean, you, Anytime you lose somebody like that, it's hard, it's tough to replace. But yeah, but you get um, both tackles back. You got, I mean, you yep. just got a lot of pieces. Tez Johnson coming back. Um, I, you know, I think Oregon knew they were loading up to go make a national title run, and still did not take that many guys, which kind of tells you they feel like they've got. Uh, you know, they only took ten out of the portal, so it tells you they kind of feel like. Uh, and I know, I guess nowadays only ten is a low number, right? But um, it is it kind of funny you that, when you said that. I was thinking, like, yeah, only ten. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you know, it tells you that they feel like they're not that far off. Yeah, and the one thing I'll say before we move on too that I like about them is you go out and you get a former five-star quarterback who is still very young in his career, who started at another Pac-12 school to come in and now back up Dylan. I think that's like, what does that say about? like just the depth of your program and the direction you're headed and that they're able to, you know, get Dylan Gabriel his year. And then, you know, Dante Moore is ready to come the following year as a Midwest kid. I think that there's a lot there to like about supplementing through the portal for the long term, not just a one-year plug-and-play scenario. Totally.